the truth. You can't handle the truth. Truth, 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 truth. And now, live from the Star Worldwide Studios Tower, overlooking the fifth largest city in America and heard worldwide, it's the Josh Bernstein Show. Liberal hypocrisy and leftist lunacy exposed and dismantled with intellect and facts. And now, here's your unapologetic host, Josh Bernstein. Welcome to another hard-hitting edition of the Josh Bernstein Show. The Josh Bernstein Show starts where the rest of the media ends. We are going to cover a lot of different things on this week's program. That I can tell you right now. But first, before we get started, uh, I want to thank everybody uh, I did a Facebook Live. A lot of people were asking me how come you know, I don't do Facebook Live events. Well, I never really did one before. So I decided to go ahead and do a Facebook Live event. And uh, man, am I glad I really did. Last I checked, it has 220,000 views. It's been shared almost 14,000 times, over 4,000 comments. Uh, and uh, it has, I think, 5,500 or so likes on it. So thank you all. Really, thank you all for your support, your continued support. I'm honored and humbled to be the voice for so many. Um, on this week's show, we are going to go through more of the WikiLeaks. Uh, last week I went through one through five. This week I'll be going through six through 10, including some new revelations that just dropped here recently uh, today, as a matter of fact, or late last night. Then a little bit later on in the program, we're gonna be talking about Project Veritas and James O'Keefe, who I had the pleasure of interviewing on my program uh, a little while back, man, has he uncovered a huge investigation in the Democrat Party. We're going to go through that as well. And then a little bit later on, we're going to talk about the saber rattling uh, of the U.S. government and State Department and Pentagon against Russia. And we're going to talk about uh, the reasons why they're doing it and uh, how dangerous this truly is. So. We'll get to that stuff a little bit later. But um, propaganda has been around for thousands of years, okay? Uh, the British used it to maintain their power. The French used it to intimidate their uh, adversaries. The Romans used it to prop up the Senate before the fall of the Roman Empire. The Nazis used propaganda, obviously, to kill millions upon millions of people, six million Jews and, and many other ethnic groups. The North Koreans are currently using propaganda, uh, probably in the most prominent way we've seen ever, uh, as the entire country is brainwashed completely to believe in their dear leader or their supreme leader or what have you. So propaganda does work. Um, and what is happening in America is purely propaganda from the media and from our government at all throngs of our government, from the top all the way down to the bottom. Um, the Democrat Party and Hillary Clinton are Nazis. Let me repeat that. Hillary Clinton is a Nazi. That's right, a Nazi. And ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, MSNBC, and many other networks are her little Joseph Goebbels. If you don't know who that is, Joseph Goebbels was in charge of the disinformation campaign for Nazi Germany in World War II. And so here's why I'm saying this, because everything that I'm saying right now is not conspiratorial by nature. It is not hearsay. It is not opinion. It is fact. And why is it fact? Well, simply because we have now seen it through the WikiLeaks channels. We know the corruption in the government. We know the corruption in the media. And we know the collusion between all of them. And they are plotting and they are scheming against you, the American people. And thank God for Julian Assange. Thank God for people like James O'Keefe and many others that are bringing this information 
out of the darkness and into the light for millions of Americans to be able to witness and see for themselves. Um, but the definition of propaganda is information of a misleading nature used to promote or publicize a particular political cause or point of view. Okay? What the media has done and engaged in is what is known as ineptocracy. Ineptocracy. Okay? Ineptocracy is a system of government where the least qualified to lead are chosen by the least capable of producing results. Okay? Ineptocracy, a system of government whereby the least capable to lead are elected by the least capable of producing results. That, in a nutshell, is what's happening in America in the year 2016, and we have 20 days or so to change that course. Last week I went over the WikiLeaks 1 through 5. This week I'm going to go over drops 6 through 10. Now, there's been thousands and thousands and thousands of emails that have been released. We're going to talk about WikiLeaks and Julian Assange and what's going on with him here in a little bit. But I can't possibly go through it all. I certainly would encourage people to go to Twitter and go to WikiLeaks, put in the, space, uh, the search bar. WikiLeaks, you will find the information. Go through it, spread it out there, and tell anybody that is still thinking of supporting Hillary Clinton that they must read this information. And to be honest with you, anybody, anybody, including my own family members who I have talked to, anybody that is still supporting Hillary Clinton is an absolute traitor to this nation. An absolute traitor to this nation. They should be arrested and they should be charged for treason. And yes, it is coming to that point. If God forbid Hillary Clinton somehow pulls this thing out, uh, there will be a civil war. You can guarantee it. Okay? Now, getting back to uh, some of the newest leaks. Uh, three days before Antonin Scalia's death, there was an email exchange between Steve El El what is it? Elmendorf and John Podesta in which they talked about what's known as wet works. Now, the only time I've ever heard wet works was in the movie Horrible Bosses, and they were looking for a hitman, and they brought in this one dude, and it didn't, let's just say it didn't turn out to be wet works like they thought. It was a lot different and a lot grosser. I'll leave it at that. But wet works is a KGB term, which is code for assassination. So Steve says, uh, Steve uh, Elmendorf says, quote, I'm all in. Now, mind you, this was three days before Antonin Scalia's death. Podesta replies, quote, didn't think wet works meant pool parties at the vineyard. I'm telling you right now, Antonin Scalia was murdered. He was murdered because he was against DAPA. He was murdered because he was against DACA. He was murdered again, uh, again because he was against uh, gay marriage. He was the thorn in the, in the Supreme Court's side that Barack Obama and the left knew that if they could get rid of him, then they would have a better chance of passing more of their leftist transformational agenda for America. So there's no doubt now in my mind. And when he first died, I immediately said, because there was no autopsy done, and it was done over the phone. And the fact that uh, what, her name, Guevara, had issues in the past with other autopsies, which I reported on at the time, I said point blank that now they're going to try to cremate him right away because they're hiding the evidence. They murdered Antonin Scalia. There's no question about it. And the WikiLeaks is leading you right there to the evidence trail. Um, that investigation needs to be reopened because, as I said, there's no question in my mind now that he, unfortunately, was murdered by Obama and the left. Now, let's see. Newest revelations that have just come out. Uh, Justice Roberts was threatened to change his Supreme Court vote back when they were first ruling whether or not the individual mandate was constitutional or not, if you remember, 
on the Supreme Court and for Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, or the Unaffordable Careless Act, as I like to call it. And so the emails now show, and, and again, I reported back then, there's no question about it, that he was threatened or he was coerced into that decision because they all said that he was leaning towards striking it down, and then within the week, he turns around and votes and says that it was constitutional, yet he did call it a tax, which if the Republicans were smart, they would have just repealed the tax because that's what they're allowed to do. Because again, this is illegal. So now we know from these emails, Nira Tandon, who is uh, in charge of the Center for American Progress, was writing to Jake Sullivan, Jennifer Palmieri, and John Podesta on June 2nd, 2015, re the King versus Burwell decision. Now this is the second decision on the Affordable Care Act. This was whether or not the state exchanges were uh, constitutional and some other things that were going on with that. Quote, it is more likely that this decision has already been made by the court, but on the off chance that history does repeat itself, again reverting back to Robert's first decision, then it is possible that they, the Supreme Court, are still deciding like Roberts went from striking down the mandate to supporting it. Then it says this, as Jennifer, Paul Mary is who they're talking about, as Jennifer will remember, it was the president's critical response and throwing down the gauntlet warning Judge Roberts in the first case by scaring him into supporting the ACA. There it is. Obama threatened Roberts either with his life, with his family's life, who knows what the left is capable of. Obviously they're very evil, so they're capable of doing lots of evil things. But more than likely, Roberts was scared Either they had something on him, they had a document on him, they were going to reveal something about him, I don't know. But more than likely, they threatened him or they threatened his life uh, and therefore he turncoated and he switched at the last minute and upheld the individual mandate. It then goes on to say, I do think it would be helpful for Roberts and perhaps Kennedy, Anthony Kennedy, to see the consequences the consequences of ruling against the government. What does that tell you? That tells you that they're saying you better beware not to go against Barack Obama in your decision or else there will be consequences, possibly grave consequences. They didn't go so far as to detailing that. But more than likely, once again, the coercion and the collusion, the Supreme Court and Justice Roberts in particular, was threatened. It's all in the WikiLeaks, okay? Now, there are reports that Assange has been either arrested or possibly killed. Uh, I don't believe he's dead. Uh, I'm not sure 100% if he's been arrested, but we do know that the internet was cut off by a state, uh, by the state, uh, and uh, in the Ecuadorial um, embassy where he has been holed up for five years. He's got a very tiny little room that's like 60 square feet, and then he's got another room that's adjacent to it that has a bathroom and a treadmill. That's it. No sunlight, no windows, no nothing. That's all this guy has. And obviously they had uh, the internet connection. Well, that internet connection again was cut, which is why those cables came out with the poison pill. And uh, that's why he released what he released and released the amount that he has released. Because again, he's only been releasing little bits at a time, but then boom, he hit it all at once. Now, we've also heard reports that John Kerry has flown to London and has threatened, okay, Secretary of State John Kerry has threatened Ecuador with, quote, grave consequences if they don't cut off the internet and the, uh, and the ability for Julian Assange to be able to get his information out to the masses. Now, there are many other people that are still spreading 
WikiLeaks information, you've got Guccifer 2.0, you've got many other people, I'm not gonna name all their names, but I will tell you this, if you want to, you can go to donate at WL Task Force, which is WikiLeaks, they, they take public uh, uh, donations, that's how they're supported, or you can go to shop.wikileaks.org slash donate, shop.wikileaks dot org slash donate there's going to be other people that are going to step up and continue to release this information and that is a good thing because the truth does need to come out now more information here podesta wished that a white man with a white man's name was the shooter in the san bernardino shooting where 14 people were killed including nicholas thalassinos who actually was a big fan of the Josh Bernstein show, who I actually uh, conversed with a little bit on Facebook. Now, he said, quote, I would have preferred a guy named Saeed Farouk, Saeed Farouk being the shooter in that case, I would have preferred a guy named Saeed Farouk was reporting the news that a guy named Christopher Hayes was the shooter. Instead of Christopher Hayes, the far left-wing radical commentator on MSDNC, he's the host of uh, a show on there, instead of Christopher Hayes reporting on a Muslim, Saeed Farouk, who went out and shot everybody, Podesta says it would have been better because we could have pinned it on a Trump supporter if the guy who was shooting's name was Chris Hayes instead of Saeed Farouk. As I said on the video that has 220,000 views that I did on Facebook Live yesterday, or the day before actually, all groping stories are false. Every single one. Every single woman that has come forward on Donald Trump is false. Every single one, and it's been proven. Don't take my word for it. Please don't. Go to WikiLeaks and see for yourself. All the stories are false. They've been planted by the DNC, and in particular, they were planted by Luis Miranda, head of communications for the DNC. Quote, like it or not, the boss may greet you with a kiss or a grope under the table. End quote. All you have to do is look at WikiLeaks, scroll through, you'll find what I'm talking about. They planted fake ads on Trump, and they talked about how they were going to plant fake stories on groping on the women. So anyone that still believes that any of those women were a victim of Donald Trump, you're absolutely insane, or you're just going to deny the reality of the facts that are in the WikiLeaks. Um, Obama was in on everything. This is a big revelation. He was in on everything. Comey, Lynch, the State Department, every single email that was destroyed, Obama knew about, okay? He even approved which ones should be deleted and which ones should be given to Congress and the FBI for their investigation. We now know that there's another 50 or so thousand more emails because of the WikiLeaks that have not been given to the State Department or for the congressional hearings. That has now come out. I mean, what else do you need for obstruction of justice? I mean, at the very minimum, this is obstruction of justice. Um, and Podesta, uh, writing to Cheryl Mills, said, quote, do you think we should hold the emails from the president or let him use his executive privilege? Okay, there you go. There's your collusion between the Obama White House, the State Department, Comey, Lynch, and Hillary Clinton and the Clinton campaign. They were never going to indict, and I'm going to get to that and the reason why here in just a minute. 2008, Clinton camp not only planted and started the birther movement, but also poll tested his Muslim father's heritage and his cocaine use in his teenage years and in college. Okay? Not only did Hillary and Obama create ISIS, but they knowingly and purposely funded them as well. Comey's collusion. No subpoenas, no grand juries, gave immunity to a ton of different people that knew what was going on, promised Hillary Clinton 
Barack Obama, the State Department, Loretta Lynch, that he would not indict, which is why there's an outrage by the rest of the FBI uh, with what he should have done and did not do. So there was never in any intention to indict Hillary Clinton because, again, the whole thing is rigged. And the last thing, well, there's a couple things, but this one's important. Hillary Clinton hates you. Hillary Clinton hates every single American that cannot benefit her in some capacity by a vote or by a handout or by money or by influence or by power. She hates you, okay? Very simple. She hates black people. She called black people super predators that need to be healed like a dog. She hates Hispanics. She doesn't respect the Latino vote. She doesn't respect Latinos and Latinas at all. She called them Taco Bowl engagements, okay? She hates Catholics. Catholics wake up, okay? She hates you. She has even said it. She hates Bernie Sanders supporters. For all you youthful, uh, zombified, millennial idiot morons out there, that believe that Bernie Sanders is somehow an outsider and is going to stop a corrupt system by giving you free college, free this and free that, she hates you too, okay? She hates you too. She even called you deplorable. She loves this basket thing. You know, she, you know what, when she goes to prison, she can start a basket weaving uh, business in prison because she likes to talk about basket of deplorables. Now she talks about basket of losers which is how she describes Bernie Sanders supporters. She called Trump supporters obviously a basket of deplorables. There's been reports that she's called white trash to people that live in Pennsylvania and Florida and Ohio. So those people in those states understand that just like Barack Obama did in 2008 when he said that you cling to your guns and religion and you're bitter and this and that, Hillary Clinton is the exact same thing. You saw what happened eight years with Barack Obama. Don't let it happen with Hillary Clinton. And one other thing. What is going on in this country is a battle between the political class and everybody else, the regular class. And to the political class, you are worthless. You are deplorable. You are irredeemable. You have no value whatsoever other than to be fooled and tricked into voting to keep these scumbags in power. That's what is going on. You are unwanted, you are unneeded, and you are unworthy of anything. And if they could, they would either kill you, round you up, or put you in some kind of in, you know, encampment, like uh, FEMA camps or something like that. Because I guarantee you, God forbid Hillary Clinton wins, that could be the future of the United States. Here's let me explain something to you. This is one of the last things that I'm going to talk about. I'm going to explain why Hillary was not indicted, and I'm going to explain where this corruption started and where it needs to end, okay? Barack Obama cheated to get the nomination in 2008 through voter fraud and his connections with ACON, okay? There's no question about it. Now, Hillary Clinton learned from Barack Obama how to cheat. And she did the exact same thing. She paid it forward to Bernie Sanders in 2016. She learned from Barack Obama how to cheat in elections and then turned it around and used those same tactics, those community organizing Chicago left wing tactics on Bernie Sanders. And the proof in, is in the pudding with all the uh, delegates that she swooped up before any of the votes were cast and the payoffs to the 33 state Democratic Party officials, okay? Now, Hillary was furious in 2008 and was about to blow the lid on Barack Obama, his birth certificate, his nationality, his religion, et cetera, et cetera, if he didn't make her Secretary of State. She needed resume experience because she didn't have much, she was just a senator, and she thought that being Secretary of State would give her the gravitas, being first lady and all that, to now run for president and show that she has, quote, experience, which obviously she does not. She could, uh, and so Obama, fearing 
the Clinton machine, bought her silence by appointing her to Secretary of State. Okay, now follow me. What Obama didn't realize was the depths of the Clinton corruption, as well as the Clinton's vengefulness and retaliation tactics against the Obamas. There's no love loss between the Obamas and the Clintons. They absolutely hate each other. They detest each other. They both think each other are deplorable. And you know, you can look that up yourself. It is the case. Okay? The Clintons, and Hillary in particular, purposely created the legal issues and criminal activity to force Obama into a cover-up. The Clintons knew that if she could become Secretary of State, she was going to run rampant over everything. Pay for play, all these different uh, things and schemes and payoffs and illegal money and laundering. and all. They, they knew this is what they do. This is who they are. What the Obamas didn't realize is that they were going to do all of this stuff, which is the naivety on the Obamas, to say the least. So Obama fell right into the Clintons' trap. They were allowed to break the law because they, the Clintons, could then prove that Obama knew about it and was even in on it. That is why Obama had to insulate himself with people that he knew were not going to indict Hillary Clinton once the legalities and the criminalities came to fruition. That's why he kept Comey on, because he knew that Comey was a longtime Clintonista hack. That's why he appointed Loretta Lynch, because he knew that Loretta Lynch had a long relationship with the Clintons, okay? So you have to understand, that is the only reason, at least up until now, that Hillary Clinton was not indicted, because Obama was in on it, and because of the collusion, he would go down with the same exact ship. Now is it making more sense? Now do you kind of understand where things are coming from? Well, good, because the only way Hillary Clinton and Obama and everybody else is going to be held accountable is by a Trump Justice Department. So once again, another reason why you must vote for Donald Trump. Because according to my calculations, and Judge Andrew Napolitano's, and Rudy Giuliani's, and Judge Jeanine Pirro's, Hillary Clinton is guilty of no less than 23 felonies, more than that, but a minimum of 23 felonies, and 18 misdemeanors, which if convicted on all accounts, she would serve life in prison without the possibility of parole. The only way this evil, corrupt, lying, dying witch will ever face justice is if the American people go out in droves and vote for Donald Trump. I'll be right back. Hi, I'm TV talk show host, political analyst, and national spokesman Josh Bernstein. I want to tell you guys about an amazing group known as the Association of Mature American Citizens, or AMAC for short. AMAC is the conservative alternative to AARP. We are a seniors-based organization for seniors 50 years of age and older. We have all the same types of products and services an AARP would have. The only difference is when we lobby on behalf of our members and Congress, it is to give more power, more control, and more freedom to seniors and their health care decisions. So please check us out at www.amac.us. Again, that is amac.us or call toll free 888-262-2006. Again, 888-262-2006. Tell them that you heard Josh Bernstein, their national spokesman, talking about them anytime you see this video and we will give you a free membership. That's right, folks, a free membership just for mentioning this video. Call us at 888-262-2006 or find us on the web at amac.us. Hi, I'm TV talk show host and national spokesman Josh Bernstein. Are you one of the 95 million Americans currently not in the workforce? Did you lose your job in the Obama-Clinton economy? 
Are you currently working for someone else but want to break free from the chains of corporate slavery? Have you ever thought of opening up your own business but decided against it because you didn't have the capital? Contact the professionals at Western Corporate Credit where they can turn your dreams into reality in as little as seven days. They offer funding up to $250,000, 0% interest available for up to 13 months, easy underwriting with stated income applications with no collateral and no financials, and they even have same-day approvals. So contact the fine folks at Western Corporate Credit at 775-553-8827. Again, that's 775-553-8827, or find them on the web at westerncorporatecredit.com. Welcome back to the program. Uh, one of the best investigative journalists in all of America uh, is certainly the founder of Project Veritas, James O'Keefe, who I have had the pleasure and honor to interview on my program uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, this is a, a young man who uses video more than anything else, uncut, unedited video, and he goes undercover, sometimes dressed as crazy characters, and he goes undercover and he gets to the truth. He finds out the truth. And he's got an excellent reputation. He is a thorn in the left side, which makes him one of our greatest heroes. Uh, if you don't know who he is, um, he's the one that crossed into America, dressed up as Osama bin Laden a couple of years ago. Um, he dressed up as an ISIS terrorist and actually walked in, literally walked in, to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio, with a duffel bag full of fake ricin. Just walked right in like it was nothing. Um, he's the one that busted Acorn for their voter fraud. He busted North Carolina for having dead people voting and not removing the people off of the voter rolls. Um, and he's done a lot of different things. He's uncovered lots of different uh, exposés uh, he went into a, a college and talked about how they wanted to see if they could have an ISIS um, group or club on campus. And the guy was like, yeah, sure, no problem, yeah. We believe in anybody free speech. Meanwhile, ISIS, okay? So he's one of those rabble-rousers. He's one of those guys that really does a great job in getting to the truth. Well, he has now uncovered a brand new video, uh, which, again, is 100% proof that every single protester that Donald Trump has ever had at any of his rallies were paid by and for the DNC, leftist liberal groups, and the Hillary Clinton campaign themselves. About five or six months ago during the primaries, if you remember, there were lots of protests against Donald Trump at his rallies. I reported back then, you can look up the show if you want, that's when I had Wayne Allen Root on my show, it was the same show, and I reported back then about a Craigslist ad that had moveon.org, people for the American way, uh, Americans for change, all these different liberal leftist groups at the time, and I showed you and read the Craigslist ads at that time, and I said all of these rallies, uh, all these protesters at the rallies are paid. None of these people are real. There's not that many people that do not like Donald Trump. Certainly not enough people that would actually go and protest his rallies. So, without further ado, check out this clip. It doesn't matter what the freaking legal and ethics people say. We're, we need to win this motherfucker. Hillary like is aware of all the work that you guys do. I hope. The campaign is fully animals. And then they tell Hillary, like, what's going on. Well, I mean, Hillary knows who the chain of command is. Yeah. I'm not suggesting we wait around. We need to start this shit right away. Okay. On every one of these fronts. Okay. What I call this conflict engagement. Mm -hmm. That's that's your that's your version of reenfranchisement. <laughs> conflict so engagement in in the lines at Trump rallies. No. We're starting anarchy here. This is part one of our undercover investigation into the dark, backroom dealings of the Hillary Clinton presidential campaign. The culmination of a year-long investigation infiltrating the machine from the bottom 
all the way to the White House. There are concerns this election will be rigged. What you're about to see will make you uncomfortable and angry. It's graphic, uncensored, and disturbing. Our attorneys say there is strong evidence of criminality. And this is just part one. A lot of reunion guys, they'll do whatever oh, yeah. you want. Yeah. They're rock and roll. So I'm basically deputy rapid response director for the DNC for all things Trump on the ground. Nobody's really supposed to know about me. <laughs> no, I'm saying, we have mentally ill people, mm. but we pay to do shit. Make no mistake. This guy named Cesar Vargas. Is his name? I got a priest to cry on camera once. You know, Brad, Bob, and Lux, and myself are all part of the old school method where it doesn't matter what the freaking legal and ethics people say. We're, we need to win this motherfucker. Um, so Bob is really good friends with him. Mm-hmm. And talked to him this afternoon. And they are all in. If we can get 25 grand, they're all in. There is a narrative that supporters at Trump rallies are violent and dangerous, looking to beat up protesters who don't agree with them. But our undercover investigation into the Hillary Clinton Democratic Party machine reveals a very different story. If you're there and you're protesting and you do these actions, mm-hmm. you will be attacked at Trump rallies. That's what we mean. Oh, so, oh, oh, so that's part of the process that's, of, get, of the eliciting the reaction. The whole point okay. of it is we know that Trump's people will, will freak the fuck out, the security team will freak out, and his supporters will lose their shit. This is Scott Fovel. He is the National Field Director for Americans United for Change. He used to work for People for the American Way, an organization funded by George Soros. He also has his own company called the Fovel Group. He is one of the dark operatives for the Clinton campaign. We are contracted directly with the DNC and the campaign, both. Yeah. I am contracted to him, mm-hmm. but my, I answer to the head of special events for the DNC mm-hmm. and the head of the special events and political for the campaign. The campaign pays DNC, DNC pays Democracy Partners, Democracy Partners pays the Fogel Group, the Fogel Group goes and executes the shit on the ground. Democracy Partners is a private political consulting company with deep ties to Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama's White House, and the Democratic National Committee. We are the primary mechanism as a team. Democracy Partners is the, the tip of the spear up. Wherever Trump and Pence are going to be, we have a bench. Okay. And we have a whole team across the country that does that. Both consultants and people from the Democratic Party and the Democratic Party apparatus and people from the uh, campaign, the Clinton campaign. Uh, And uh, my role with the campaign is to manage all that. And the truth shall set you free. Can you believe this? And by the way, this is only four minutes or so of that. There's actually a 16 minute video, and because it is so much more explosive than even what I showed you, I'm actually going to include the rest of the video in the YouTube link. And believe me, you have got to see the rest of it. But just seeing the first four minutes, the language that they use, the laughing, uh, you know, saying that we're going to throw ethics completely out the window. Ethics don't matter. We've got to win this MF, right? It's all about cheating. It's all about the goal of creating more globalism and more leftism and socialism and communism in America. Oh, bragging about we get homeless people and people that are psychotic and crazy to do all kinds of crazy S for us and commit voter fraud. Uh, We engage in uh, conflict engagement. Um, We can't do it inside the rally because the Secret Service will be part of that. So instead, we make sure that when we see the people lined up outside that are waiting to get into the rallies, that's where we cause problems. That's where we have issues where we're punching people, where we're cursing at people, holding up signs. We've had people injured. They're bragging about the people and the cops being injured. Well, these people ought to be sued for this, for sure. Uh, And then they talk about the different players. Aaron Black, uh, the ground protest coordinator, says, uh, nobody should really know who I am. I'm the guy that coordinates everything, all the attacks and all the ambushes 
and all the riots and all the other things that go on at the Trump rallies, I'm in control and I charge, uh, I, I'm in charge of putting that all together. Then the one guy says, he's bragging, I made a priest cry on camera once. But this is how they think of you and your Catholicism and being Catholics and priests. They detest you, okay? They would be happy if, if a Muslim came in and cut your head off and held it up to the camera. These people are sick, they're disgusting, they're deplorable, and they are the ones that are irredeemable. Then he, then he brags and he says, union guys will do, quote, whatever you want. The union guys will do all kinds of crazy S. You would never believe some of the stuff we get them to do. Then they start talking about this Scott Fovel guy, is the National Field Director for Americans United for Change. Yeah, for change. You mean for communism. Not for change, for communism. It's amazing how they use these buzzwords of change and growth and progress. Meanwhile, they're all a bunch of communist Nazi bastards. Then he says, we quote, we are contracted directly with the DNC and the Clinton campaign. Boom, there's your proof. All of these protesters, they're bragging about it right there in front of your face, are coming from the DNC, these leftist groups, and the Clinton campaign. America, is this the type of criminal behavior and activity you want to move forward with in the year 2017 under, God forbid, Hillary Clinton? Don't you want to punish these scumbags, these criminal animals? Don't you want to see them go to jail for breaking campaign finance laws and for all the different things that they've done? These people are evil. They are the worst of the worst. They are, in my opinion, no better than a Muslim terrorist because they are terrorists in their own right and actually have more power because of what they do and how they manipulate the system and manipulate you, the dumb voter out there. So I'm going to post, like I said, the rest of this. You need to watch the rest of it. And more than watch this, you need to talk to the people that you know in your life, whether you work with them, whether they're relatives, whether they're cousins, uncles, roommates, friends, drinking buddies, it doesn't matter who they are. If they still don't like Donald Trump because they think he's a loudmouth or they think he's an idiot, but they're still going to go out and vote for Hillary Clinton, you need to show them these types of videos. It is your responsibility and duty to wake people up to the evilness that is going on in their government. And if you don't do it, then you are guilty just as well as anyone else. Because I can tell you right now, I am using these videos every single day and sharing them with anyone I can, including on left-wing sites, left-wing groups. I will talk about them when I do my radio and television interviews. I will not rest. And you cannot rest either. We've got 20-something days here to right this ship. Otherwise, America will be lost forever. Now, do you want to be part of the solution or do you want to be part of the problem because you think something Donald Trump said was nasty to women? You are the one that is the moron and the idiot. And I can't say that any clearer than that. We'll be right back. Here are four women's lives that have been impacted by Bill and Hillary Clinton. And he grabbed me again very forcefully and started biting on my top lip. And this, is, this was extremely painful. I thought he was going to bite my lip off. It was, uh, and that's when he pushed me back onto the bed. It's sad that a 12-year-old had to go through what I had to go through. Because for days I cried and cried and cried over it. Sometimes I still break down and cry. trying right now not to tear up, but it's kind of hard sometimes, you know. Yeah. They jerked me off my bicycle. They took me out on a road. I don't know what road it was. That's where it started all beginning. 
when I turned around, he had dropped his pants and he sat down and he exposed himself to me and he asked me to perform oral sex on him. Is that how he said it? No, he said, would you kiss it? And then he took my hand and he, and he put it on his genitals. And that's when I pushed away from him and, and decided it was time to get out of there. If these four women haven't convinced you yet not to vote for Hillary Clinton, maybe these four men will. I'm Josh Bernstein, and I approve this message. Welcome back to the program. You know, I was getting ready to uh, do another segment, but like I always do between segments when we're recording the show, I always check the Drudge Report, because you never know when breaking news is going to happen. So, once again, on my phone here, Hillary, fixer breaks ranks. I arranged sex trysts for her with men and women. This is from the uh, National Enquirer. Now, before you say, well, that's a rag magazine and they have no credibility, guess what? They're the ones that broke the John Edwards story way back when, so they do have credibility. They also broke a bunch of other stories as well. Um, Hillary Clinton is a, is a secret sex freak who paid fixers to set up illicit romps with both men and women. Now, if you remember, I did a show um, I don't know, probably about four or five months, months ago, in which um, I talked about how the email revelations, if they were ever to come out to fruition, will show Hillary Clinton being a lesbian. That show has over 215,000 views on it. Lots of people have seen it. So, once again, with this information, uh, she's having sex with both men and women. I talked about uh, Marky Post. I talked about... Um, uh, Yoko Ono, I, I talked about some of the other women that have been involved, but now it says the blockbuster revelation from a former Clinton family operative who is sensationally breaking ranks with his one-time boss to speak to the National Enquirer in a bombshell nine-page cover story on newsstands this Wednesday. I arranged a meeting for Hillary and a woman in an exclusive Beverly Hills hotel. The man who was hired by the Clinton said via Hollywood executive to cover up the scandals told the Inquirer. Now, I'm not sure who the man is yet, and I certainly don't want to paint the person who I think it is. I think I know who it is, but I'm not going to mention them publicly because I've actually uh, grown to like them. They're a good friend of mine, and I've had them on my program four or five times. So the folks that have watched my show throughout the years would know who I'm talking about. But then it goes on to say, that she had come to the studio to see the filming of a movie in 1994. While I was there, I helped her slip out the back exit for a one-on-one -on -one session with the other woman. It was made to look casual, leaving quietly rather than being caught up in the melee. But really, it was for something presumably more sordid. What's more, it wasn't just Hillary's flings with women that the shadowy Mr. Fix-It helped to orchestrate. Hillary's former bag man finally confessed to the Inquirer just how he helped to cover up her affair with married lover Vince Foster as well. The shadowy figure who provided proof of his employment for the Clintons also revealed 12 fixes he covered up, including how Hillary secretly plotted to a counterattack on Bill's mistresses, including Monica Lewinsky, Lewinsky via a document buried for two decades. Um, what crooked reporters were on the take from the Clinton camp, which ones were getting money from the Clintons. We already know that Politico had one of their reporters uh, writing favorable articles for them. Um, how he covered up Bill's CD romps with hookers. And which A-list celebrity had a secret affair with Bill Clinton during his presidency. In the bombshell expose, the Inquirer will reveal the fixer's dossier of smoking gun proof, including 24 years of documents, notes, and journals. He also tells his, quote, confessions of a Clinton bagman story in his own words for the very first time. I have heard numerous stories, and the unkept secret in Washington is that Hillary Clinton is indeed a lesbian. Uh, there's been lots of stories that have talked about that. These stories are now coming out. Thankfully, 
and more and more stories are going to come out, thankfully, and we are getting ready for tomorrow night's debate. And tomorrow night, what Donald Trump needs to do is very simple. Attack more than he attacked in the second debate. We were all waiting for it in the first debate. It didn't happen. He held back. In the second debate, he let her have it good. And all the polls show that he let her have it good. In this third one, he can't hold back at all. As a matter of fact, if I was him, I would write down, let's say, five or six of the top WikiLeaks that are so damaging. And I would write them down on a piece of paper. I would study them. And then when I get to the, to the debate, I would whip out that piece of paper. So I had my notes right there. And I would ask Hillary Clinton about each and every one of them. And I would definitely, without a doubt, choose the one about the fake stories and groping all the women. If Donald Trump does that tomorrow night, he'll win this whole thing. Because now their biggest argument against him, which has already been proven to be false, will now be seen as false in front of millions of Americans. We'll be right back with one more short segment. It's 3 a.m. and your children are safe and asleep. But there's a phone in the White House and it's ringing. Something's happening in the world. Your vote will decide who answers that call. Whether it's someone who already knows the world's leaders, knows the military, someone tested and ready to lead in a dangerous world. It's 3 a.m. and your children are safe and asleep. Who do you want answering the phone? I'm Hillary Clinton and I approve this message. I'm Josh Bernstein, and I approve this message. Welcome back to the program. Um, I want to talk in this short segment about this World War III saber rattling by the Obama administration, the Pentagon, the State Department, the media, the Hillary Clinton campaign. Everybody is, has this boogeyman in Russia. They're saying that the Russians hacked the DNC. They can't prove it. There's no viable proof of it. They're saying that, you know, Russia's doing this and cyber attacking us and all this other stuff. I don't believe any of it, okay? I don't believe any of it. But let's talk about some of the stuff that's going on. Well, right away, we have our uh, Alzheimer's afflicted Vice President Joe Biden going on Chuck Todd's show and telling that we're going to be launching at some time a cyber attack against Russia. Then we had the State Department and the Pentagon saying that we were going to execute uh, terrorist attacks through our channels inside Russia. Then we have Soros backing the US aggression. The Russians have put a wanted dead or alive poster out there and have banned George Soros, smartly, from being in Russia. Um, the Russian people and the uh, government has ordered all students that are studying abroad to send their children home. The Russians have been ordered to stock up on essential supplies and foods. 40 million Russians are now war ready at any moment. The British government has now frozen bank accounts on RT, Russia Today. And all of this stuff is going on while Americans are, you know, looking at the presidential race and going about their lives. We're not taking this risk seriously, this threat seriously. Now, let me tell you, this is the biggest, most blatant example of wag the dog in American political history, okay? This is Wag the Dog. You remember the movie in the 90s with John Travolta? And, you know, they had to come up with a, a fake war to, for political reasons. This is Wag the Dog, okay? Now, our globalist, Islamocentric government are the culprits here. There's no question about it. They need a scapegoat. 
So who are they going to use as a scapegoat? The big bad Russians and Vladimir Putin. Okay? So they want to blame the Russians for their own lack of integrity, their own incompetence, and their own stupidity of being able to allow all of their emails to be hacked and now in the hands of foreign dignitaries, leaders, world leaders, and everybody, because obviously we see all of their emails all over the place. So they decided to pick a fight with a former KGB nationalist, okay? Not a very smart idea, all right? This is not the bear you want to be poking, that's for sure. Now, I believe that Russia has absolutely nothing to do with hacking, and I believe the administration knows that this has nothing to do with hacking, okay? This has nothing to do with WikiLeaks. This has nothing to do with the Russians really at all. What this has to do with is one thing and one thing in particular, protecting globalism at all costs. The globalists just got hit really hard with a surprise uppercut that went right between the gloves and they were stammering and staggering all over the place when Brexit happened. So now the globalists know that Donald Trump is winning and they know that Donald Trump is going to be the knockout punch that they can't afford to have. So what are they doing? They're throwing everything they possibly can at this, including actually going into a war with Russia to somehow save their political power and positions. These people are dirty, rotten scumbags. Can't really say it any other way. So as we see now, they're talking about banks collapsing. They're talking about the economy collapsing. They're talking about uh, the fact that Brexit is, uh, is somehow a mistake and all these different things. Meanwhile, there is referendum after referendum after referendum in countries like Sweden and Denmark and Norway and Spain and France and possibly even Germany that are all pushing to get out of the European Union. And rightfully, they should because the European Union is evil. Globalism is evil. There's no question about it. And you have a nationalist in Vladimir Putin and you have a nationalist in Donald Trump. I'd rather have two nationalists working together to defeat globalism and terrorism on a worldwide scale than, God forbid, have an Angela Merkel type yes woman in charge of America spreading globalism, death, destruction, and mayhem across the globe. What Donald Trump should do right now is he ought to fly to Russia before the election, fly to Russia, and meet with Vladimir Putin. And then what I would do is I would bar and ban all media, Russian media, foreign media, American media. Have a sit down with Vladimir Putin, then fly back and not discuss anything that was discussed between you and Vladimir Putin. What this would do is it would embarrass the White House, it would weaken the White House, it would embarrass the Pentagon, it would weaken the Pentagon, it would embarrass the State Department, and it would weaken the State Department. Then what he should do is understand that what they're going to do is then turn around in the media and say, look, we were right. Uh, Donald Trump is a Russian agent. The alt-right are all Russian agents. And it's Russia that you have to watch out for and all this. This is the big boogeyman. This is, this is their protocol. This is what they want to do, okay? But the bottom line is if he did that, he would undermine any ability of provocative acts before the election that, that the State Department, the Pentagon, or the Obama administration would consider doing. And that way, we would have the ability to not have a war going on 
before the election because even the foreign minister for Russia said it is possible that we could have war break out before the election. There's been other Russian leaders that said if you want to avoid a nuclear war, vote for Donald Trump. I believe our government is guilty in the aggression towards Russia. That doesn't mean that I'm siding necessarily with Russia, but I am siding with nationalism over globalism. And as I said before, and I'll say it again, this is an election not about left versus right, not about conservative versus liberal, not about Democrat versus Republican. This is about nationalism versus globalism, and they know it, and we know it. And that is why we have a chance to defeat globalism on November 8th. And are we going to do it? God, I hope so. We need all the Americans to go out there and vote on November 8th. Do not vote early. Do not vote early. The more earlier you vote, the more likely your vote will be compromised. So go out there on November 8th and say to the globalists, we're not going to take it. That's all I got for this week. Until next week, God bless.
Thank you for joining The Josh Bernstein Show. Unabashed, unafraid, and unapologetic. Holding America to a higher standard. For more information on The Josh Bernstein Show or to connect with Josh, just go to StarWorldWideNetworks.com.